Today, we are going to roleplay as Swifty and rank the one shot of every spec in Cataclysm, from the best to the worst. Trust us, you might be shocked at some of the specs that come out on top, no pun intended. And if you're new to Cata, you definitely don't want to miss out on our 400 rating gain guarantee. We've got brand new courses for every class, specifically designed to teach you all of the secrets to carry in Cata PvP. From doing maximum damage to landing pixel perfect CC and more, everything is covered. Now has never been a better time to be a SkillCap member as a single sub gets you access to all of our games, including instant access to the War Within guides when the expansion goes live. So if you're serious about climbing and getting the rating you deserve, head over to SkillCap.com using the exclusive links below. Alright, back to the video. First up, we have our two Death Knight specs, and the placement of Frost might be a bit shocking. If you come from retail, Frost DK is one of the number one causes of air horns blasting in the Grand Arena, since the spec is one of the reasons why weak auras exist. Now, in Cataclysm, Frost DK is definitely not as scary. Don't get us wrong, Pillar of Frost is a big damage increase, but it's lacking some of the built-in utility that makes it so strong in retail. Trust us, you're going to see much scarier damage in this video. Now, as it turns out, both DK specs share the same awkward problem when bursting. Both Frost and Unholy have access to the iconic Necrotic Strike ability, which deals minimal damage on its own, but of course absorbs a huge amount of healing taken. At least for Unholy, this means relying on Gargoyle and Dark Transformation for its true burst, with the Empowered Ghoul requiring a long ramp up time, and the Gargoyle having a small delay and some awkward positional requirements. So despite being really good at killing people, both Unholy and Frost DK will actually be going in the B tier. Balanced Druid is one of the hardest specs to rank because on paper they have one of the scariest damage combos by hard casting a Star Surge, getting a Shooting Stars proc mid cast, and then launching two Star Surges back to back at the target while in Eclipse, then exploding some pre placed mushrooms on the ground. The thing is, you will almost never see a Balanced Druid actually do this in a real arena game. They're too busy hopping around pressing Moonfire to pad the meters. But don't get us wrong, even those instant Star Surges can hit hard, especially during Eclipse, and the DPS spike of Balanced Druid with Treants, Starfall, and Dots rolling can add up to a lot of damage within a very short window. But since the true power of Balanced Druid Burst requires a lot of RNG, it will be our third spec on the B tier. Feral Druid was another relatively difficult spec to rank as by definition, it's also a dot class more than anything else. The majority of feral damage is going to come from rip and rake as their two main burst abilities take a back seat on the meters. That being said, it's possible for Ravage and Ferocious Bite to deal some pretty big damage and with the right buffs and procs, feral druids can get some pretty big bites. So because ferals can actually pack a punch with enough modifiers, they will be going on the high tiers. There's a few reasons why Marks is unanimously considered the best hunter spec in PvP. Not only does it have the best CC, but it also has the best burst, which can all be reset with this neat little button. Marks Hunter Burst is arguably the scariest at the very start of every game for a few reasons. The first is Careful Aim, which increases the crit chance on aimed shot when targets are above 90% HP, which is pretty much guaranteed at the start of every arena. The second reason Hunter Burst is so deadly in the opener is because they can actually do an entire sequence from camouflage without it breaking, using rapid fire and an on-use trinket to land an aimed shot instantly into Chimera, ensuring both of their hardest hitting abilities lands at the same time, all while the unsuspecting victim has no idea what's happening. Even if this opening sequence fails to land a kill, Mark's Hunters can reset everything with readiness, even Chimera Shot itself, allowing them to use one of their hardest hitting abilities back to back. Just ask any mage and they will tell you that Mark's Hunter Burst is no joke and it will be the first spec making it to the S tier. Speaking of mage, let's dive into their burst damage, starting with fire. Fire mage burst can be exceptionally scary because it is one of the few sequences capable of affecting multiple players at the same time. It starts with the mage fishing for a hot streak proc by shattering scorch and fire blast into frozen targets. They will then try and shatter their instant pyro with an on use trinket active, hoping that it crits. And this is the key detail you need to pay attention to, whether or not an on-use trinket was committed. Because if it was and the pyroblast crits, they will pull the trigger on combustion, combining all of their fire dots into a giga dot, which can then be spread with impact. Now by definition, this dot damage isn't really burst and it has the ability to be countered with a simple dispel. If a healer gets lucky, combustion can be quickly removed, instantly stopping the majority of damage. But what can make combustion so difficult to counter is that it won't break Dragon's Breath, which is why good mages will blanket CS into DB after combusting a healer, after spreading it with impact, laughing as the whole team dies at the same time. So because Fire Mage Burst is technically a dot, but is actually difficult to avoid, it will be going in the A plus tier. 
Frost Mage, on the other hand, is definitely a spec known for its burst, once again relying on the shatter mechanic to get those true one-shots. Now, just like Fire Mage, there are a few small details you need to pay attention to because the damage of shatter can vary dramatically. First up, not only should you look for icy veins and on-use trinkets, which will be macroed together in most cases, but you should also check for other trinket procs, like Dark Moon Card Volcano or Theralian's Mirror, as these will greatly increase the mage's damage. Then, the other major puzzle piece is Brain Freeze, which gives the mage an instant frost fireball. And when the stars align with trinket buffs, icy veins, brain freeze, and a shatter, the frost mage is able to deal an absurd amount of burst. As one of the deadliest potential combos in the game, Frost Mage will be the next spec going on the S tier. Next up is Rhett Paladin, which is another spec known for its incredible burst potential. You know the term cooldown stacking? Rhett Paladins basically invented it in Kata, as they not only have Avenging Wrath, but Zealotry and Guardian to go with it. Guardian is the first step they'll take to enter their cooldown window, as it will feed them a stacking strength buff. Then, typically at around 10 stacks, Rhett Paladin will use Avenging Wrath, Zealotry, and an unused trinket to absolutely blast the target with a few Templar's verdicts in a row. If the stars align, it's over 50% of someone's HP within two globals. Look, Paladin damage is so scary that it was literally the first thing we added to our weak auras package. So, as the pinnacle of cooldown stacking and Cataclysm, Rhett Paladin takes an easy spot on the S tier. Up next is Shadow Priest, who seem to be quite rare in Cataclassic, at least so far. Surprisingly, Shadow Priest's burst is actually really good, but takes a fairly long time to build. In order to do the biggest damage, Priests need to use Mind Flay to build up 5 Evangelism stacks and then 3 stacks of Shadow Orbs. The Evangelism stacks can then be consumed to use Dark Angel and activate the wombo combo of 3 Mind Spikes into a Mind Blast, double death while their Shadow Fiend bites away at the ankles of someone who is either dead or just lost half of their HP. It's quite rare that Priests can actually land the Triple Spike combo in Arena, but even a simple Mind Blast Shadow Word death can be a huge hit of damage. All things considered, there is no denying that when left unchecked, the Shadow Priest burst combo deserves a high tier ranking. Now, what might come as a complete surprise is how highly Elemental Shaman will rank on our list. Despite being one of the most underrepresented specs in all of Cataclysm, Ellie Burst is definitely no joke. It involves one major cooldown and a few core spells. The major cooldown is Elemental Mastery, which makes the next spell instant and provides a damage buff. Ellie Shamans will use Unleash Elements into Elemental Mastery in order to launch out a huge instant lava burst, which is guaranteed to crit if the target has Flame Shock. The Shaman can then follow this damage with an instant Earth Shock, which will consume extra Lightning Shield charges to deal huge instant damage, all while landing immediately after the instant lava burst. And once this damage connects, it is a massive instant chunk of damage, which can spell lights out if you aren't already high on HP. Now, because this damage can happen so quickly and has the potential to move a lot of HP, Elemental Shaman will actually be going on the S tier. Unfortunately, Enhancement is going to rank much lower. In Cataclysm, Spirit Wolves deal considerably less damage, and most of the scoreboard damage from Enhancement will unironically come from Flame Shock. Yes, you heard that right, Enhancement Shaman might actually be a dot class. The real burst from Enhancement Shaman comes from Lava Lash, which has the potential to hit quite hard during Trinket procs, but with a 10 second cooldown, the damage doesn't quite have the lasting impact needed to be truly scary. So as a spec with no clear burst cooldown, Enhancement Shaman will be going to the mid-tiers. Up next is Sub Rogue, the other contender for best melee in all of Cataclysm, who unlike Feral Druid is more known for its punchy burst. Sub Rogue is another spec that benefits from modifier stacking, as Find Weakness, Sanguinary Veins, and Improved Ambush means that rogues can pump out massive damage during the duration of Shadow Dance, often being able to use Ambush up to 4 times during its 8 second window. Rogue might not have the punchiest damage with Ambush, because there are several abilities we've covered today that hit harder, but what matters more is how long the Ambush train lasts. The damage is scary alone, but what is even scarier is the lockdown, as unlike most specs on this list, it comes with a long duration stun, making it incredibly difficult to counter. So as one of the most reliable and seemingly unavoidable burst combos in the game, Sub Rogue will make it to the A plus tier. Just like Feral Druid, Affliction Warlock is another spec whose true power level is not really represented by burst. Obviously, due to the nature of being a dot class means that Affliction Warlocks can't possibly have a swifty one-shot macro. The true strength of Warlock damage is built around attrition and slowly snowballing pressure. While the spec can certainly microburst with Demon Soul Dots, Haunt, Shadow Bite, and Nightfall procs, Affliction simply lacks the punchiness that we're looking for when ranking a burst combo. Because of this, it will be our final dot spec falling to the low tier. Last, but certainly not least, is Arms Warrior, who has proven to be insanely strong in Kata's first season. A big reason for this is because Arms Warrior can actually do some very impressive burst and is another big winner from modifier stacking. 
With Colossus Smash, Recklessness, and Enrage, Warriors have a trifecta of not only of big damage increases, but big damage that is very likely to crit. And with three stacks of Lamb to the Slaughter, this damage can be funneled into a massive Mortal Strike, which can be used at the same time as Heroic Strike for a one-two punch that can absolutely obliterate someone's HP. Seriously, Arms Warrior Burst is better than most people remember. There's a reason it was the Swifty one-shot macro and not the Soda Pop and one-shot macro. Arms Warrior will be the final spec on this list, landing on the A tier. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee that you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.